Blessings and welcome to News Intercession. I am Judith Diagano. We encourage you to stay with us until the end of this bulletin so that you can help us to pray. Let us look at the news making headlines for today. Society continues to justify abortion by denying the truth concerning life in the womb. Life is a gift from God, starting from the moment of fertilization. Here's more on the story. The word of God, you know, tells us that, you know, God says he knew you or he knew us from even before we were formed in our mother's womb. So to me, in God's eye, or at least my understanding of scripture, that's when life is, is, is already there. When, when God talks to Rebecca um, about, his twi about the twins she was carrying, she, he addresses them as your sons. He actually goes even further and addresses them as there are two nations within your womb. Uh, so God even went even further into it and did not just see the sons that she was carrying in her womb, but God could actually see the nations that were at war within Rebecca's womb. Um, so for me, with those views, I will say I don't think um, abortion is God's will uh, for our lives, but I do understand that. Um, People are sometimes put in situations where they end up having it. The gruesome facts of the process that happens during these terminations are unknown to many mothers who end up opting for this route. At this point, the baby is almost fully developed and viable, meaning he or she could survive outside the womb if the mother were to go into labor prematurely. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. The book of Psalm 100 verse 3 reminds us that we are created by God. However, the policies of the world around abortions have deceived many into believing that life does not begin at the time of fertilization. This is why many women find themselves in a situation where they make inhumane decisions that stand against the word of God. What's your justification for aborting your child? Most of the people that I speak to abort their child because it's not convenient. I'm no longer with my boyfriend, so I'm going to abort the child. Or the boyfriend is encouraging the girlfriend to abort the child because he can't afford it, or his parents are not going to understand, or, well, I just wanted to have sex with you. I wasn't expecting a child. So you know what? Why don't we just abort the child and we can just pretend that it never existed? But I want you to know today that every woman that I've ever spoken to in my 24 years of being a Christian have all regretted their abortions if they have committed an abortion. Abortion has claimed in excess of 24 million American babies in the last 40 years or so. And in South Africa this year, we have gone beyond 30,000 deaths from abortion. Yet abortion is a government sanctioned matter of the innocent. What are you going to say about it? Because God hates bloodshed. What are you going to say about that? Because that brings the judgment of God upon people. This country has killed four million. Four million. Do you know how many they killed in the Holocaust? Six million. Are we outraged? Yes, we're outraged. Should we be outraged? Yes, we should be outraged. But here in Canada, Canada, liberal Canada, since 1969, we've murdered four million Canadian children. It grieves God. Because it takes us back to the ancient practice of the worship of Moloch. Moloch as the broad god of prosperity. The idol of prosperity demanded newborn babes. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new at all. And, and the same uh, spirit is preying on our children. We cannot be a church that is silent on matters, on issues that matter. You're going to be a church that prophesies cars and houses, that prophesies prosperity and fruitfulness and turn a blind eye to injustice. That it is law does not make it justifiable. Apart it was law. There's some stage in Germany, the Holocaust was war. The war on the Jews was, war, was law. 
But was he justified? This is not something that helps the community. Now you might think for a moment, killing a child will help you. But it also leaves you with an emotional and physical and mental scar that you can't get rid of for the rest of your life. Because deep inside of your conscience and all of our consciences, we know that there was a human being within that womb. I can't understand for the life of me how anyone, anyone, I don't care what the reason is, you could have gone through a rape and you might like, oh, it's my body, how, how dare you say that? Listen to me, I'm not supporting nobody's rape, but one thing that you need to understand is that that tragedy doesn't justify another tragedy. And there are so many opportunities for this child that you don't want in your life to be given to a family that wants a child. I know so many families that are looking for a child today. While society continues to debate around the issues concerning abortion, the children of God are encouraged to continue praying for the redemption and healing of those that have been scarred by this act. As churches, we tend to shun these people and, and be for life. However, we, we want these women to have these kids, but once they have the kids, the church is sometimes nowhere to be found in supporting these women with their kids. So I think if we're going to be pro-life, we need to be pro-life from, you know, from the beginning till the end. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, and through the blood of Jesus, there is forgiveness. Come, let us pray. The grace of God still is available and it covers over a multitude of sins. And with Him, um, there's so much forgiveness. You know, when we repent and we cry out to Him for His mercy and His grace, I believe that He would, you know. And, uh, that God still loves you, that you matter to him, you are his child, and uh, he wants you to be well. God wants you to be well. He gave of his best, his son, Jesus Christ, um, with the hope of gaining you. Just say yes to him. <laughs> and walk a different journey, no. you will never regret it. We have come to the end of our bulletin. Please remember to subscribe, comment, like, and continue to share. Amen. Father, we thank you that you are a loving God. We thank you that you are a forgiving God and that um, you have plans for us and plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Thank you, Lord, that you, you know us from the beginning till the end. I just want to pray this time for um, anybody who might be living with the guilt of um, having committed abortion that you would... Uh, help them to find forgiveness, to be able to forgive themselves and that you would forgive them as well, that you would free them from that bondage. Um, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And I'm calling on the church today. I'm begging you, rise up church. Rise up born again, evangelical Protestant Christians. Unite with your brothers. Get over this nonsense of racial division. Get over this nonsense of economic division. Get over every division because we have a mission at hand. And if we do not call our nation to repentance, our God is going to destroy this nation. Yes, yes, this is fire and brimstone. And I'm in the right spot for it because this nation needs to turn to the living God. They need Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father except through me. So what will you do today? All you good folks that are listening, Will you turn to the living God and be saved? Or will you continue with your hard heart and be downed? The choice is yours.